Hello, and welcome to Sammy's Cottage Kitchen. Don't even have the apron on today because, as you hear from the music, I think I'm turning into rosé today. And we're going to do Mexican cuisine. I'm wearing the hot shorts, I'm wearing the hot apron, and I'm going to be making some spicy foods. I've had the good opportunity of going to Mexico a couple of times and experiencing some of the cuisine. I also found a Mexican cookery book, so I looked at a few things and now I mess with the recipes and make it my own. The music that you're hearing in the background is my husband and I on this album called Rose and Jose. After our experiences down in Latin America, we uh, decided to come home and learn how to sing some of our songs in Spanish. You're going to hear me singing some Canadian Spanish in the background because I have a lot more guts than brains, so I just go after all these things. Anyway, as the music's playing, because it makes it really fun, I'm going to start with making my prize-winning chili. I won a competition in Nashville, Tennessee when I was starving as a musician, and much to the dismay of all of the American people, they didn't know I was Canadian and they weren't too happy when a Canadian could make a better chili than an American. And I thought, oh. And then I did a competition in Black Diamond, Alberta, and I won with that same recipe. And over there on the door, you'll see some spoons, three spoons. And um, those spoons are a trophy. That's a trophy. When I moved here to Langenberg, then uh, my sister said, hey, we're having a chili cook-off, and I need you as my partner. It's at the school. Well, we won those three spoons. So now I am going to share my recipe with you. I'm going to start. I've got still a lot of tomatoes from my garden. I've got all these peppers from my garden. And that's what kind of made me think about this. I thought, well, and I've got the hot peppers as well from my garden. Onions, little tomatoes. So I thought, what better than to make chili? I hope you enjoy the music as we're cooking today. I'm going to start with the... Uh, the carne, el carne, that's meat in Spanish. I'm going to turn on the heat here. This is the pot I'm going to be using to put it in. I have a nice big pan. I'm going to tell everybody you need to have a nice heavy skillet for cooking your meat off. And don't put too much in a pan at the same time. Listen to the Spanish. It was probably one of the hardest things I ever did with the music. <laughs> Learning all the Spanish. Because when we were down in Latin America, I wasn't very good with Spanish at all. So sounds funny to be using avocado oil, but I'm going to be using avocado oil again because, well, avocado is definitely a staple in Mexico, but it's my favorite oil for cooking. I have a little bit in the pan already. Add a little bit more. And I will be using a slotted spoon because when I'm lifting the meat out of the pan, I do not want all the grease with it. So I'll keep that handy. I've got a pot ready to go and I'm going to get, I've washed my hands because that's just something you should do. I've probably washed them six times already today. It's a lot of fun doing some Spanish type cooking or Latin or Mexican. And that's my husband, Jack Hollenberg, playing guitar. He has composed all the instrumentals that you're going to hear. And I composed all the lyrics, lyrical songs. So now you're going to get the pan, pan is preheating. I got to let it preheat just a little bit more, put it on full blast. Wash my hands again. And while that is starting to cook, I'm going to stand over here and I'm going to start chopping. I've got to make some room on my island because otherwise I'll never get it, be able to do that. As you can see, everything's bright and colorful. Bright things like this, everything's bright. And that was what I was going for. Put the cheese back to the side. I think I'll start 
with the onions because I'm going to need the onions. I'll just get a bowl back here. As soon as the meat is done frying, because then you're going to saute up the onions and the garlic because uh, that takes off and deglazes everything in the pan. And I better put the fan on because I don't want the uh, smoke detectors going off. So you won't hear the music as well while I'm cooking the meat. But I will turn it up just a little bit so that you can. There, now I can put a little bit more meat in the pan. But I'm going to show you how, when you're frying the meat, it's important that you don't put any more than that, although it's a very big skillet. If you put more than that in the pan, it's going to get all like milky and it won't be nice. Uh, it'll kind of boil instead of fry. And you want it to brown. So that's why I'm doing that. I've got a pot ready to go here. And while you're all sleeping, I chopped up a few of the tomatoes. And I got some of that going on in the pot already because it would be like watching paint dry if you're going to watch me chop up everything. I'm making a fair amount because I like to be able to put some things in my freezer. It's wonderful to have chili every once in a while to just take out when you need it. So while that's going, I will get a cutting board, my trusty cutting board. Apples on this side, onions on this side. It's always a good habit. Because sometimes when you're washing the board, you don't even get all the onion flavor that has infused into a board. So keep the two sides separate if you have a two-sided board. I'm going to take away all the peels. I never told you what else we're making. I am also going to make a chicken enchilada. That's delicious too. But we're going to start with the chili. Once it's all stewing, the work is done. The song you're hearing right now is The Streets of Cali. And that was the inspiration for the album. Because we went to Cali, Colombia to do a mission a cultural mission and it just changed our lives to think about how much we have and how little they have so I sang the song about our feelings in English and then in Spanish can't speak Spanish worth a hoot but I can sing it strange isn't that strange I think that's strange see how nicely that's browning it's good to use a lean beef. We left the peace of our hearts on the streets of Cali. And that's true. You'll need a whole onion and a large one too, like a large onion, because it adds the sweetness to the, um, actually a good way to not make such a mess, I was going to show you that earlier, is to put a paper towel down. It always catches all the skins and that way I can peel the rest of the onion and the garlic. Coming down to Cali. You notice how I'm doing the onion? I do um, a vertical cuts like this, and then horizontal. Keep your fingers out of the way, always knuckles. And you get a nice fine cut. You get no fingers in it. 
And it goes quick. I can smell that meat. It needs to be taken out of the pan. And that's good, because I got to put another batch in. See how nicely browned it is? It stays in some nice chunks, because you want to know you got meat in your chili. So now I don't want all the grease in. So I'm going to tip it to the side that way and pull the meat up to the top. See, the grease stays in, which is great, because I need it for frying the next batch. Man, that brings back memories. Awesome memories. Now I'm going to put some more meat in the pan. Carne. Carne. Lean ground, of course, like I said. So another. I'm going to have to do three batches in order to do this right. Interesting, this um, tune that you're listening to my husband uh, composed out at uh, my sister's, my sister and her husband's cabin by a lake. And he was watching my sister Jan and I out there kayaking and the sun sparkling on the water and he came up with this. It's amazing where songs and melodies come from. I think he's extremely talented and I'm mighty proud of him. All right, so the meat is cooking and keep it on high because if you turn it down, yeah, it's gonna get milky again. You gotta really put it on high. It makes a heck of a mess. You can use a splatter screen, which I should have done from the start, and I will do it now, but I'm gonna to have to clean anyway. Okay, now I finished dicing the onions. And put them in a bowl. You've gotta have garlic, of course you've got to have garlic and it's homegrown garlic. And there's a lot of people who are growing, there's people around this country that all grow their own garlic. There's one lady, I don't know where she lives exactly, but she grows like, she's got a real garlic business going on somewhere in Bertle, I think, somewhere over in Manitoba. And we often get our, it's funny, because they never break apart like, like our garlic does or the stuff you buy. But that means it's good garlic. You know, it's good and strong. There it is. Woo, tell ya, it made me fight. That's crazy. There it is. Really good solid toes. But these are the main ingredients. I'm gonna talk to you as soon as I've got the meat finished because it's a little noisy for me to talk about the frying. And I gotta get some of this chopping, dicing, and slicing done. Because this has to simmer. It has to simmer for a minimum of an hour, which makes it wonderful because at the end of the simmering product, we will have an, an amazing pot or dish of chili for lunch. And my nephew is working next door at the house next door. We are in Langenberg out of my kitchen here in Langenberg that my husband built for me. And uh, my nephew, uh, Adam, is a, yeah, a contractor and handyman, and he's over working on the house next door. So I told him and his buddies, it's chilly for lunch today, pop on over. And they will. They thought that was a mighty good plan. I'm just gonna set this garlic aside because I'll need that for the guacamole that I'm making for another dish. You see now, the mess is cleaned up. I'm gonna do the same thing when I'm seeding the peppers. Have to check my meat. Oh yeah, beautiful. See, it's funny, because you can put the thing on for drippage for a splatter, but you gotta take off the splatter screen and then still splatters. Ah, that's part of cooking, isn't it? A Little bit of a mess. Now, you might see here that I've got, ooh, I'm gonna put my onions over to the side because they're going to go in the pan after the meat. Missing a few here. 
These are all my peppers. I've got red, I got green, I got purple. That was the end of my purple ones. It's green on the inside, which is interesting. And I've got yellow. It's really important to have a lot of different peppers in my chili. Part of my prize winning chili recipe is that I have got about eight different chilies and peppers in my minimum of eight, sometimes 12, depending on what I have at my fingertips. And that's where you get your flavor. It isn't all about heat. It's doing well. I'm going to quickly open a can of kidney beans because that's important that that's in there just to get that in because it's going to have to start stewing. I add the peppers and I add the onions as it's already stewing. And I'm going to show you how I add all the peppers. It's when you put the, it's like making a curry. When you put your onions in the pan, you want to fry your peppers a little bit. It kind of makes you cough sometimes, but it's great. I'm just going to go in the pot. If you have the time and you want to soak your own kidney beans and do things organic, that's possible too. I ran out of time because the band and, um, and us have been rehearsing too because we're doing some shows this month. All right, that's ready. Again, take this to the side. See, nicely crisped up. I'll put the last batch in and again, tip it. Tip it this way so that I can get the meat without all the grease. You need a little bit of fat, that doesn't hurt. But when it's lean beef, you don't have to worry too much. There we go. One more batch. And I'm going to get this stuff started for stewing. I shouldn't call it stuff. These ingredients. I'm going to get that back and get it to this side and turn it on medium. Get the rest of the meat in the pan. Spitting away, making a real mess. A little bit. Break it apart a little bit if it's got a touch across in the middle because I did have it in the freezer. As most of us have to. Can't, everything I've got is in the garden, and except for a can of beans and the meat. I didn't butcher the cow, neither. <laughs> okay, I'll put the screen on there again. I put, discard the pan, wash my hands. And I'm going to bring all the peppers to the side here. Put this back. So you can see what I'm all putting in. And I'll talk to you about that as I do it. Because I've got to chop up a few more peppers. Now, some sweet pepper, get that done. Again, you take a little paper towel. And dice it up. As quickly as you can because you want to have that ready to go. Woohoo! Sad, but that is free a Peppers. Very quickly with a sharp knife, you cut strips like this. Keep your knuckles up against the blade. And then again. Now these don't have to be fried ahead. You just throw them into the chili pot. So that's the orange one. Ooh, that's starting to look good already. Mm -hmm. 
listen. <laughs> time go in your life. You might notice I've kept the hot peppers for later because I got to put gloves on for that. You don't ever want to work with hot peppers without gloves, and you don't ever want to rub your eyes when you're working with hot peppers. Also want to be careful how many you're putting in there. Because you can add, but you can't take away. That's my motto. This is a song I wrote. It's on my Winds of Change album too, and we just switched the beat to make it Latin, and we sang it half in Spanish. I don't know. Musicians, we have to create. Artists, we have to create. I think that meat needs turning pretty quick. I work well when music is playing. I don't know, it just feels good. Then I'm gonna take some red pepper, throw that in there. Okay, that's already two peppers. I want us to count how many peppers I'm putting in, right? That's two different sweet ones. I got a little bit of green. Interesting that little book I showed in the beginning of the show. I don't know, I've had it a long time. And it tells you about the names of some of the hot peppers, which I never knew. I only knew jalapenos. It's kind of good to be educated while you're cooking with it. Talk to me. Okay, some green peppers. Okay, that's three. I smell the meat. I gotta turn the meat. Ole! <laughs> Better get in the spirit of things. I'm just too busy to. Woohoo! And it's getting nicely kind of browned on the pan, which is great, because that's where you decaramelize with the onions. Chop it up a little. My favorite song in the album is this one. It's called Radiance. My husband was, we went for a little break to Radium Hot Springs. We were living in Okotoks. And uh, while I was hiking around and thinking about songs and doing things, he created this one. Okay, now I've got a little purple one. See how green it is on the inside? It's awesome. But that's the fourth pepper. Got to take the stem off. That meat is ready. And I'm going to turn the pan down. And then I can just keep this to the side. I need this. And turn the pan right down to the other side on uh, just above simmer. All right. So far, I haven't heard any uh, of my smoke alarms going off. I guess this trusty fan's working. I've often mentioned in the show that my wonderful daughter-in-law created this with my son, her name is uh, Katie, Katie Mesmer, and my son, Wes Mesmer. And they created this whole thing for me. It's just unbelievable, awesome. I'm gonna pour some of the grease out of the pan because I don't want the extra grease, obviously. But you see, I've got all those little bits and pieces in there, which is nice. Put it back on the heat. This is where the onions and garlic go in. We were just um, visiting with our children and grandchildren this weekend. We had a wonderful time. Now, you saw I'm putting the peppers in there. I put four different sweet peppers into this chili. I'm making a big batch. Because sometimes I'm too busy to just make things. I 
have to have time. I'm going to put this pepper to the side because I don't need it. I had enough. But I do have to grab a glove for holding the pepper. Oops. Hooked myself there on the door. Extra gloves. Now I'm going to show you something. I've got the onions deglazing the pan. It's also going to add a nice flavor because it sweetens the onions when you do a little saute on it. But I've got four peppers in there. I'm going to put a little bit of smoky paprika. But you have to put it in here because you need it to fry a little. I'm going to measure really well. I'm going to put about a tablespoon. Cayenne, it's hot. You don't want to put no tablespoon. So I'm going to put about half a teaspoon of cayenne. That'll be four, five, six. Uh, chili powder, that's seven. And I'm going to put two tablespoons. You want that for the flavor. That doesn't have so much heat as it has flavor. And then I'm going to take, this is a wonderful thing, it's called a Spices of the Sun. Spices of the Sun. See, it's really nice. It's a real mixture of everything from hot peppers to sweet peppers, to garlic, everything. Now I'm gonna use my hand for this because I wanna make sure. And you're gonna put that in there like that. So how many is that now? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is called sambalulic. I'm only putting a little bit in because I'm gonna let people add their own. This is a wonderful, all-ready-to-go hot spice. I'm not going to put that in the pan because it's liquid. So a small spoon like this, and put two in there because it's a, it's a big pot. Now I'm going to saute this up because, see, if you don't do this with the powdered spices, you don't bring the flavor out. And how I deglaze this is where I'm going to put a few chopped tomatoes in there. I already have a lot of tomato in there, but I want to put some more. And then I'm going to add the hot peppers after that, and then just let it stew away. Seeds and all. This is my environmental song. Cry for the fear and the pain. I just do a rough chop, rough chop like this. And then I shut the pan off already because this is just gonna deglaze. I'm gonna throw it into the chili. The recipes will be on my website and that's at www.sammyrosehollenberg.com. So I'm not telling you the exact amount that I'm putting in, but I will do my best when I put it on. So here you go, we gotta throw this into the spice mixture with the onions and everything. And that'll take every bit of the flavor out of there. I've already shut the pan off so nothing burns. But I gotta turn up the chili. I've got a couple magic ingredients that I add to my chili that a lot of people don't know, plus those nine to 12 I haven't even got those in. I got nine in already and I haven't even got the hot spice, those other hot spices in there. So I won't be putting too many. And you don't need to put a lot. See this mixture? Looks great. And that just gets added into the chili. It's a heck of a concoction. It's an important concoction. Just gonna put a little water because I don't wanna lose any of that. Otherwise, you don't really use any water in the, in the recipe because of the tomatoes, and beans and everything. It's a lot of liquid. Now, I grew these. I never saw red jalapenos peppers before. But ole, I have them. I grew them. <laughs> they aren't any hotter. They're just wonderful. So you just take the seeds out, like that, of the thing.
going to cut it in quarters like that. And then I've got also the green jalapenos. Again, you take the seeds out. Seeds are usually hotter than the flesh in this case. So now I'm going to just chop them up nicely. So they all cook down into a nice swoosh because it really has to stew. You got to do a little bit of tweaking with this. Okay, so there you go with the hot jalapeno, red and green peppers. See how colorful Mexican cooking is? It's amazing. Now comes the, these spicy ones. I'll tell you the names of them in a minute. I'll have to re-look them up. I'm only going to take two green and two red because, okay, so how many peppers was that then? Nine, 10, because those are just jalapenos, 11. No, I got another little one. I got 12. See, that's a different kind. This is a different kind. I got 12 peppers in here. But just a little of everything instead of having a, you know, you don't take a whole handful. Now people are probably wondering, how do you, you know, you grow these things, how do you keep them? I'll show you that in a minute too. These you can keep the seeds in, by the way. And they've got a tough skin, so they do have to stew. And now this wonderful little piece of dynamite because you wouldn't want more than one of those in there. The smaller the peppers, the hotter. Good thing to remember. And watch out for the habaneros. I couldn't find habaneros and I didn't grow habaneros. Again, you would only have one habanero pepper. In they go. Woohoo! I can feel the spice. Now it's starting to bubble. So it's starting to stew. And I have to turn it down. And I'm gonna put in, look at the magical look in this pot. Whoa. I'm gonna throw away my, it's quite a job putting a chili together, really. People think, oh, just throw a few things in there, but not if you wanna do it right. Now, magic ingredients. You want it to hold its color. The tomatoes will leave things kinda of acidy. So I use a little bit of fancy molasses. Better than sugar, you need a couple tablespoons to go in there, just like that. Measured very well. <laughs> and that will cut the acid. It also, if something is very hot, like say you by accident ate a really spicy chili, like decided to, oh, I wanna check this out, you know. <laughs> you best have sugar. Don't take water, it will just blow up in your mouth you have to actually have sugar. So if you're eating and you have something too spicy in your mouth, you just take a sugar cube or sugar, just sugar, and it will cut. You need to know that. Now, I wanted to say what some of the names of those peppers were. And it's right here. Oh, here they are. The very, 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 very hot ones. Skinny hot ones, number six, are called Guayano chilies. I don't know. I think I said that with an Italian. Oh, I think I said that with an Italian accent. That'll never do. And of course, the jalapenos. And then there's another one called um, Pasia Negro. Uh, that's the darker ones. And then these are the dried ancho chilies. That's what I wanted to show you. I picked those out of my garden. And this is what I'm doing to keep them. I'm drying them. I have to learn how to say things with a Spanish accent, obviously. Told you I couldn't speak Spanish. So yeah, very nice. So I keep those to the side as well. Okay, there's one more ingredient that I put in there that is a very special ingredient, very important, and I've never shared it before with the public. I have told people many times in my cooking show here that I freeze chili because it's better for, what am I saying? Ginger, I'm freezing the ginger because I'm gonna put ginger into the chili. You think, what? It's a digestive and it's just that one thing. If you have trouble digesting any kind of tomato, 
based. See, it comes out like a powder. And if you have trouble digesting any kind of tomato or spicy things, this, about a tablespoon of grated chili, very, very, very chili, I keep saying chili, um, grated ginger. When you grate the ginger in, it will give it a nice little flavor. It seems like I'm doing a lot, but it's very fine, like powder. And that's my magic touch. And that's something I've never shared with anybody before. So you're all special. Now your work's done. I just got to give it a stir. And I have to put the lid on it just so that it gets to stewing very well. And while that's stewing, I'm going to clean up my little mess. And then I'm going to start on a chicken enchilada. And look at this, the chili is stewing beautifully. It won't be long and it's ready. I've got a couple magic ingredients to add to it. One of it is a little bit of a smoky barbecue sauce, like a hickory. I like that smokiness in there. And then I'm gonna add my little touch of Canadian. Remember I put a little molasses in? Well, here's another magic ingredient. Just a little bit of maple syrup. Again, it's gonna cut the heat, but it's not going to make it too sweet. It's gotta be real maple syrup, of course. And then I'm gonna just, that's the last ingredient, so I just have to let it stew away. So the work is done with that. Oh, it smells heavenly. <sighs> so I'll just leave that there. Now, what I've got going on, I'm gonna make a chicken enchiladas, special recipe, it's wonderful. I'm going to dice up, I've got my glove on, you might notice here yet, um, I walked away with my knife though. This is something I'm gonna be putting in the oven. I pre-cooked the chicken, I just got some chicken thighs. You can use chicken breasts, you can do whatever you wanna do, but this is what I had in the fridge, and that's what you should do when you're cooking too. You look in the fridge, and you say, okay, what can I make today? Okay, it doesn't have to be chicken breast. It could be chicken thigh or chicken leg. Chicken was on sale. Chicken it is. I'm going to just put my glove on because I'm still dicing up a little bit of pepper. I need another piece of paper towel. Ooh, uh, I love this song. It's called The Dance of the Butterflies or El Baila de las Mariposas. I love it. Makes me want to dance around the kitchen. Okay, now I've got two-thirds of a cup of cream. I'm dicing up one jalapeno. Oh, by the way, this is pollo, when you say it in Spanish, pollo. It's spelled P-O-L-L-Y, which you want to think it's an L. It's pollo. You don't pronounce the L's. It's kind of pronounced like a Y. Okay, so now I'm going to take this green jalapeno and I'm going to put it into the cream. I'm going to set the sour cream aside. That's for later. That's for garnishing. I've got one egg. I'm putting this all into a blender. The song that I'm singing right now is called Gracias a la Vida. It's a wonderful, it's almost like a anthem song for Chile and we were fortunate to go to Chile and uh, it means thanks for life and believe me I do that every day okay now you see I've got cilantro I got an egg a little bit of hot pepper cream and I'm going to chop up the cilantro very important flavor in here and I've got a few of the red jalapenos. They're gonna go in there too, just a half of one. Need some spice, but not too much. Also gonna take a little bit of the tomato sauce. I need a spoon. Gracias a la vida. Diced peppers. Ah, oh, tomatoes and peppers. Scenario. 
Monte Claro. Now, I've got this trusty blender. It's awesome. Just gonna do this. Blend it up. Just like that. Now I've got flour tortillas in this pan. I'm gonna shut them off. I just need one. I've softened them up, right? One, two, three. Three. Oh, they're hot. Tongs. Tongs would be good. Sometimes it's just too hot for the fingers. Don't need too many. I'm gonna make one, two, three, four. I'm probably gonna make about six. Five. Just set these aside because I don't need any more. These are ready to go. I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to take a little bit of this spice with a small spoon. And I'm going to put that into this tomato mixture because I want a little bit of spice when I'm filling these. Now, I'm going to tear the chicken off of the bone, just roughly. Just something to put it in. The bones, don't want the bones. I took the skin off and I poached it. I wanted to show you how to do it, but it would have took too long. So all I did was put it in a, a chicken stock, added some onion and some uh, thyme, so that I get a nice kind of chicken flavored chicken. Not spicy. This dish is less spicy. So now, I'm just gonna put a couple of them in there, like this, because I'm gonna fill them individually. Tear up the chicken a little bit like that. I guess I can take off my glove now. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this spicy mixture with the tomato, not much, a little bit. Drizzle it on there. And then a little bit of cheese, combination, whatever cheese you choose. I got a mixture. It's just gonna hold hold it together. And you fold them like that with the seam down. And you put them together like this. And you take the next ones and do the same thing. Gracias a la vida. As you know, I say thanks for life every day. And this one, a little more. I'm going to have a, probably enough for six. I'll see how I do. And again, a little bit of the spicy tomato mixture. Not too much. A little bit of the cheese. Not a complicated dish at all. It's just you know, a little bit messy as you're making it, but nothing serious. And I like using the small flour tortillas. Oh, I put that in first, it doesn't matter. So I will have room for one more and enough chicken for one more too. Make sure you don't have any of the bone in there. It's kind of important. And again, some of the cheese. Mix it like that and you lay it against each other and I have to go back here and see if I can find one more of the uh, flour tortillas. 
This one will work. Woohoo, hot, hot, hot. I know I'm making hot food, but. <laughs> the last of the chicken. That was three chicken thighs. Now I'm using to make six of these. A little bit more, I'll put a little bit more in there of the spice and the tomato mixture. Oh, and a little bit of cheese. And I have the oven preheating at 350 right now, and it's going to need to cook for about 15 minutes. Because really, everything's cooked. It's a matter of it all coming together. So now I've got this wonderful uh, sauce that I made. Oh, first, I have to be stronger. Of course, when your hands are wet and you're trying to open it, it doesn't always work. I had, I'm the one who closed it, you know. Now you just take it and you pour it all across like that. See, it's just a nice, oh, it smells great. All across like that and around. And it's going to be a nice dish. Okay, that in here like that. And now you're gonna sprinkle it with a little bit of, see the nice green specks that are in there? That's the cilantro and the pepper. It's really beautiful. Then you sprinkle it with more cheese. This is not diet food. I've had the good fortune of that. Now, there you go. It's gonna have a, a nice creamy spice to it in the oven for 15 minutes. I'm gonna put the timer on and I'm gonna check on the chili. And I think that uh, looks like a uh, ole. <laughs> and it goes into the oven. I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes because just when you're busy with other things, it's silly to forget what you're doing. Timer. Okay, it's ready to go. Let's check on the chili. Oh, it smells so good. Look at this. Now. I wanted to, sh when I showed you that I threw all the tortillas, the flour tortillas, into there. You just buy the tortillas anywhere, and you put them in a big pan like that. I actually let them heat a, a little more than I should have, but it's not the end of the world. The bottom ones are crusty. You just don't use them for that. But if you do want to toast up the rest of the flour tortillas, you can use them actually with your chili. You can kind of make them all crusty and toasty, and you can use them with your bowl of chili, which we probably will do. Yeah, I'm dancing around the kitchen because I'm just sort of waiting for things to finish. Just want to remind everybody you're listening to Rose and Jose, which is an album we did half Spanish, half English after a lot of experiences in down in Central America. This one's called Rose and Jose. I'm the Rose, obviously, and Jack is the Jose. Okay, what I've got is the enchiladas in the oven. They're just about finished. The chili is ready, but there's a couple tweaking things. I've done almost everything. But here's something I add, always, quinoa. It makes your dish healthier. You just add a couple tablespoons of it. I pre-cooked this one, but if you're doing where you have longer time for it to stew, then you can just uh, cook it right in the chili. See? Oh, and it looks succulent, and it looks so good. I'll be serving it up in a, a dish, because of course we all gotta have lunch. Leave it there. But in order to serve the enchilada, I've got to quickly put together some guacamole. I cut one open because I wanna make sure it's okay. Way to get the stone out, you just hit the stone like that with a sharp knife and you twist it. Okay, now I don't have to peel this because I just need to spoon it out because I'm going to smush it up. Very important when you make your own guacamole, and of course it's a staple of the Mexican food. That's just my timer, which means the enchiladas are ready. I'm going to just take them out before I continue with the guacamole. And they need to sit and rest for a minute anyway. Oh, they look awesome. Would you look at that? Woohoo! I can't wait to sink my teeth into that. Too hot right now. That will be spicy. The guacamole will be cooling. So, just clean that out of there. I got a lemon, very important. 
I've got a little uh, strainer because it's an easy way to make sure that you don't get seeds into the uh, lemon that's in the guacamole. You don't want to be chewing on a seed. I also like a little bit of garlic. Very important to have some garlic. I've showed you before that there's a heart in the garlic that you kind of have to take out of there because it's the bitter part. So you take that out. Just squash her in there. A little bit of garlic, gotta have garlic. <laughs> I think guacamole, chilies, and garlic are the main ingredients of Mexican. Roseanne, Jose, Oh yeah, it's Spanish. And I like to dice in a little bit of tomato. But I like taking away some of the seed for this. Well, it's pretty ripe, so I'm not going to use it. I think I'm going to go with this instead. Just put a little bit of pieces of these little tiny ones in. I like those two. I can go either way. Wipe my hands off. Awesome. Now, I need a fork. It's a simple thing to make. I need just a little bit of hot spice, so I've got this pepper here. I'm gonna just make it really fine though, you see? What I did with the onions, the same idea, because I want them to be very fine. Just want a little bit of spice in your guacamole, not too much. See, very, 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 very fine work. And I'll add those in the tomatoes after I've squashed it up a bit. The lemon juice is important to keep it from going brown, right? Very important ingredients. This is gonna be nice too for serving it. You can throw that in a blender or something too, but it's really easy to put it in a, a dish. There you go, look at how nice that is. You can also take just a bit of sour cream and add it to it. It'll give it a creamier texture. You can kind of give it your flavor. I didn't know, but there's a whole bunch of different kinds of guacamole when I was reading in the book. If it's from Santa Cruz or if it's from, I don't know, wherever, different places like Puerto Vallarta or Soyelita. I've had the good fortune of being in Soyelita twice. Awesome. Okay, so now I'm gonna add this little bit of peppers because it's gonna make it colorful as well. It almost looks like Christmas when you do that. Then you're going to add bits and pieces of the tomato. You don't need a lot. It's just a nice thing. Because I'm going to garnish anyway. But I'm going to add a little bit more tomato. Some of my tomatoes are a little ripe because they've been waiting for me to do something with them. So there you go. So there's a little bit of spice. There's a little bit of lemon. Looks messy because it doesn't matter. I'm going to be serving it. Just gonna move my mess to the back. The other thing you want in there, oh, I guess I need this for a minute, is a little bit of um, cilantro. Again, that cilantro, I forgot to mention that, that's also quite a staple of the um, Mexican foods. This song always makes me wanna to dance too. There you go. Now I'm gonna just get everything over to the side here and I'm gonna start plating things. I think I could use just one of these to show you how this looks. First of all, you're gonna wanna take the enchiladas like this. It's nice and creamy. One, you're gonna usually serve two per person. You don't have to, but it's nice if you can. Take it from this end first. Awesome. Now the thing to do with that is you put a little bit of sour cream with it, a little bit here, a little bit here. This is not a diet food. <laughs> I keep saying that. And you're gonna want the guacamole right on top like that. Awesome. You're gonna want to garnish with a little bit of cilantro. 
You're also gonna to wanna to put a few of these wonderful tomatoes around. Look how pretty that is. Ah, always three. And you leave your plate wide open because you can put, if you want, a few more tomatoes on it, or just for the heck of it, a, cr a couple crunchy crackers to eat up the side. I'm gonna serve a little bit of um, chili. You're gonna see how rich this looks in the bowl. It is a whole meal in a bowl. How about that? I'm gonna put just a little bit more sour cream on the side, a little more guacamole on the side. Ah, I think I gotta put another tomato in there. I'm going against the, the grain. Now you're also gonna to want to have a few of these. I hope you've had a fun time with me in my Mexican kitchen today because this tastes so good with it. I'm also just gonna put, because it looks pretty, a little cilantro on the top. If you don't like cilantro, you could pick it off. But it looks pretty, does it not? I'll move it to the side. And I'm gonna put a few tomatoes here because people can have that too. One more time, I wanna thank you for hanging out with Access and me in Sammy's Cottage Kitchen. And I'm reminding everybody to love the life you live and live it every day. And when you're cooking, do it with love because it's fun, it's fun to create. And if you don't enjoy it, yeah, just go buy chili at somewhere else. I can't say where, but there are other good places for chili. But I'm happy to share my good recipe with you. I hope you enjoy it. The enchiladas, we're gonna dig right in. I don't know about anybody else, but I am gonna have to taste the enchilada. And I'm gonna do it right now before, uh, before I sign off with everybody. And that's not even fair, because everybody's watching me do this. So, here we go. I should put this dirty lid away from here. Ah, I'll bet you there's a spice to it, but I know for a fact that it's going to be delicious and creamy. Ooh, that's too big of a piece. Till next time, please sign in and have a look at us on uh, Monday. Mmm. 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 Okay. That's bad. I wouldn't serve that to anybody. I want it all for myself. Monday, 7 o'clock. Tune into Access and you'll see Sammy's Cottage Kitchen there. Please join me. Till next time. Love the life you live and keep on keeping on. <laughs>